Welcome back to Anatomy Dissected by Complete Anatomy. Today we're going to look at cranial nerve 8, the vestibulococcular nerve. This video has three learning objectives. Firstly, we'll explore the path of the vestibulococcular nerve to the cranium. Secondly, we'll look at its role in maintaining balance and hearing. And thirdly, we'll go through some of the common clinical correlates that may be associated with this nerve. The first thing to note about the vestibulococcular nerve is that it is made up of two smaller nerves, the vestibular and cochlear nerve, both of which have a purely sensory function. The vestibulococcular nerve first emerges from the brainstem between the pons and medulla, or the pontomedullary junction. It courses through the posterior cranial fossa in close association with the facial nerve. It then enters the petrous part of the temporal bone through the internal acoustic meatus. Within the temporal bone, the nerve divides into an anterior trunk, the cochlear nerve, and a posterior trunk, the vestibular nerve. Here we have isolated the vestibular cochlear nerve and organ. After the division of the nerve, the vestibular nerve passes through the vestibular ganglion, a collection of sensory neuronal cell bodies. The nerve then divides into superior and inferior branches. Both branches travel to the vestibular organ, which is comprised of three semicircular ducts, the utricle and the saccule. The superior branch conveys sensory information from the anterior and lateral semicircular ducts and the utricle. The inferior branch innervates the posterior semicircular duct and saccule. The cochlear nerve travels towards the cochlea and coils up on itself to form a spiral shape within the cochlear duct. Let's take a look at a cross section of one of the coiled ducts. From the spiral shape, you can see that the nerve makes contact with special hair-like cells in the cochlea. These convey auditory information from movement of the fluid within the cochlea to the auditory cortex. The cochlea is responsible for hearing. As we mentioned, the cochlear nerve functions to transfer auditory information from the hair cells of the cochlea to the brain, allowing for hearing and the localization of sound. For more information on the cochlea and how it transduces sound, keep an eye out for our soon to be released microanatomy cochlea model. The vestibular part of the nerve is responsible for maintaining posture and balance. As we mentioned, this nerve conveys information to the brain from parts of the vestibular apparatus, such as the semicircular ducts, the utricle, and saccule, translating information such as rotational movement and the position of the head with respect to gravity. Damage to the vestibular cochlear nerve often presents as hearing loss and or vertigo. Hearing loss occurs due to damage to the cochlear part of the nerve. Tinnitus is another common complaint which presents as a ringing, hissing or roaring sound either uni or bilaterally. Vertigo presents either subjectively, where the patient senses that he or she is moving, or it can be objective, where the patient feels that objects in their environment are moving. It occurs as a result of damage to the vestibular part of cranial nerve 8 or damage to the vestibular apparatus. And that brings us to the end of another cranial nerve. At this point, you should be comfortable with the path that this nerve follows, its functions in hearing, balance and posture, and some of the associated clinical correlates. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out some of our other videos on the cranial nerves and subscribe to our channel for updates on any future videos.